Okay, welcome back, everybody, to the Law Unscripted, where we talk about the law and the legal system and everything you didn't know. Didn't understand. And no one ever told you about jury selection. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> So that's our topic of today. We are going to talk about jury selection as best as we can. Um, Stay tuned and look into your own states. This is a fun topic. I'm Virginia Tarani. And I'm Chelsea Rogers. And we're part of Tarani Law LLC because you never need a lawyer. Till you do. We have dogs. um, um, Very fuzzy dogs. They got groomed on Sunday. So I have Charlie sitting on me for those of you Mm -hmm. who can see through YouTube. He's the um, he's the blonde little cocker spaniel and then beside me is willow who's the merle colored cocker spaniel and then on the very edge over there is sky our little silky terrier um curled up in her pajamas on the blanket i don't think you can see her in the cameras but they were very insistent on being in the shot and we honestly started a little bit late today because charlie wouldn't stop grooming himself he wanted to look good for the camera yes but you didn't stay on to hear about our dogs. You <laughs> stayed on to hear about jury selection. And I think we're going to give, we're going to do a little general about it mm-hmm. and then a little bit more specifics because everybody wants to know how does this happen? Yeah. How do you get on a jury? How do you get off a jury? <laughs> how do you not get on a jury? Have really expressive faces. <laughs> yes, that's helpful. So we're going to go through some of that. But the jury and selection is really a fascinating process. I think so. And one that people see on movies, on TV shows. Yes. There's so much in the popular culture. Some of it's right. And some of it you just don't know until you get there. And attorneys know because they do it. Right. But anyway, so the courts put together lists from the public records. So this is the, the original. They start with lists from public records. Okay. They have to be residents of the county or the jurisdiction that they're in. Okay. So if it's a city, they have to be a resident of the city. If it's a county, they have to be a resident of the county and so forth. That actually excludes quite a few people. Yeah. So you won't get called to your jury if you don't have a license. So you, my friend, I'm going to get called in Georgia, <laughs> still have your Georgia license yeah. as a, and that's fair because as a law student and a college student, yeah. your primary residence is technically where your parents live or right. your mom in this case. So you have a Georgia license and technically you would be called in Georgia and not in DC or Maryland. Yes. But despite my best efforts, they won't put me on a jury. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so there's that too. They would never put me on a jury either. Because you're an attorney. Yeah, so I'm jumping like, ahead a little bit, but I think it's fair. Okay, but here, no, no, I have a lot of thoughts about this. <laughs> I think a system that excludes people who work in that system from taking, like, that to me seems sketch, right? Like, are you, why wouldn't you want someone who knows how the system works to then take part in the system? It seems scary to me that we would prefer people who know nothing well they're they're not excluded on rule base right so there's but not actually put a an rule. attorney on their jury it is rare i would try not to i mean if i i mean i'm not an attorney yet but if i in a couple months after passing the bar god willing got put on a jury i'd wreak havoc right i mean that's the truth well and that's the thing is the people who know feel like they knew best and they know better and they're absolutely going to be the foreman. Yeah. And whatever their opinion is, is going to be the everybody. opinion of the full jury, right? Yeah. Because they know and the jury is going to say, wow, well, that's the attorney. Yeah. What do you think? I don't know. What do you think? No. What What do you think? Because whatever you think is what I'm going to do because you know the law. You right. know how to do it. So as a jury member, if I didn't know law, I would look to the person who did rather than the people telling me. See, okay, you say that, but in my little fake trial where we got to watch the jury and it was some people, it was like people from the community and there were a couple law students. I watched the jury as they were deliberating. The law students got bullied. They were, they were correct. They were making really correct points. Cause I told you my whole fake trial was kind of, I won, but it was because of something that I shouldn't have went on. It was not my legal argument. That's <laughs> right. Not, that's not why they picked me. And the law student was very correct trying to point out 
that what they were talking about was not my argument. And they were bullied. Yeah. And in the sort of group, there's, I think there's only one law student. And so like the group mind was like, no. And she eventually was like, all right, then. I mean, well, and, and that's the case too, is a lot of juries in the deliberation and we'll get to that part later, mm-hmm. but in the deliberation, there are so many factors outside of the case that affect jurors where they decide on anything but the law. Yeah. So I get up with the jury, and this is why I love and hate the jury system, is I have no idea whether they're going to listen to anything that I say, or if they do, what they're going to take away from it. And it's not always the law. I had a a murder trial that I did um, where co-counsel and I, we had not meant to dress similarly, but right. we did. I mean, there's only so many options for right. professional you, you know, There's the brown suit. There's the gray suit. There's the black suit kind of thing. But somehow we ended up in the, the two, two-day jury trial where we wore similar outfits both days. And we talked to, one of my friends talked to some of the jury members afterwards to find out, well, what, you know, made your decision. And, and it, they didn't want to talk about that. They wanted to talk about, well, it was really cool that the Commonwealth's attorneys had matching clothes. Their suits were so cute. Isn't it nice that they looked the same? They presented a united front. Absurd. And, Absurd. And that's what they talked about, is they were concerned about our clothing. And in a murder trial, it was shocking to me. I was like, okay, so I'll just show up in matching clothes next time. But And I was frustrated. I felt that the right decision had been made, that Mm -hmm. the guy was convicted. I believed in the guilt. That's why I was doing the prosecution. But in the end, I was like, was the jury really convinced? Or they just liked our clothes? Right. It was a little disheartening because I wanted them. And I'm, I'm sure that was not the only thing. But that was one of the fixations that they had where we had presented cell phone data yeah. and tracking and all of this, you know, drug evidence and all of this other stuff. And in the end, they weren't talking about the dog who had lived and the people who had died. They were talking about what I was wearing and a lot of different factors influence the jury. I think about this all the, the time law. because that's why it, I think we've mentioned it in our last episode is that when your defendant comes to court, you want them to present a certain way. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there was, oh, I'm going to tell this like, I'm trying to think of, so there's this guy, oh, no. he had a lot of face tattoos. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. truly like skull, a lot of tattoos. And his attorney at one point had filed motions to have him in a separate room or set up some way so the jury would not be prejudiced by his yeah. appearance. I'm obviously giving like the very bare bones oh, yeah. of that, but that was something that they talked about. I mean, mm-hmm. you see, I think I said it last time, but I'll stand by it. You, they dress them up like they're Sunday school teachers. Yeah. Like people who are accused of just the most insane things look like. To. And But the thing is, is that it's they do it because it works. Yes. They're not doing it for no reason. And it is how humans work. Um, There are preconceived notions and stereotypes and prejudices that people may not even realize that they have. It's unconscious, yeah. But you're having to present something that will be better on their subconscious than strike a bad nerve. And you're right, someone with tattoos, especially facial tattoos, there's a strong negative assumption and preconceived notion of them, well, they must be bad. Right. They must be drug dealers. They must be criminals. I mean, there are all of these preconceived notions and that's what you're facing with the jury Yeah, is what do those individuals bring to the table that they have that you can't question them for days. You can't, you know, check into their background, look into their work situation, talk to their friends. But you try to find out what you can. So you you do what you can do strikes, right? You try to sort of, what's the old adage, like the the bumper sticker question, you know, in a way to sort of suss out what you might think. You know, maybe if you have a case where the the victim is a child, you want mothers on the jury. Like if you're trying to convict, right? But if you're the defense, 
you don't want people with a lot of kids on the jury. Yeah. And those are the considerations. So the judge will bring in jurors, um, people who it's live like in random the random pool. Uh, yeah. People who live they're they're on the voting registries, right? They have to be able to vote. They're on those registries. They have to be over 18. They can't be convicted of felonies. I was just about to ask you that. Cause I was like, I know you lose, like you can't vote a lot of the times with mm-hmm. felonies, but you can't be on juries either. Correct. I think that is wrong too. I think people who have been to prison should probably be on juries. <laughs> well, and and in a lot of states, they're fighting that. Okay. Um, they're fighting the loss of rights for being on a jury. They're fighting loss of rights of voting. I, I don't have an opinion either way. Um, some people would think I should have a strong opinion one way or the other, but I don't. Um, but that's currently the yeah, rules in I most didn't know states. That. Um so there, there are certain parameters. They're pulled in from a random selection and brought in. And they're usually, it's called a jury pool. Mm-hmm. Because there aren't just 12 people who show up and get sat on a jury. Oh, no, it's like a cattle call. You're in these big rooms. Yeah, there's generally, when I've had juries, they, they fill the courtroom. Okay, they fill the jury yeah. box with a number. And then they fill the gallery, so to speak, with the rest of them. Oh, interesting. Okay, so when I, I was called multiple times and never could get onto a jury, but they would have us all come into, it was not a courtroom yet. We were like in this huge, almost auditorium. I don't know what it was used for mm-hmm. normally. And they would be like, these rows go that way. These rows go yeah. that way. And they kind of would like divvy everybody up. Yep. And then you would go up to these courtrooms and then you would fill like with the, whatever section you were in. And then the fun started. Absolutely. And so that, yeah, so there's a huge... Usually there's a huge room, some kind of jury room. There's going to be in courthouses a place for the jurors to Mm -hmm. go. And they have to show up on designated days. Yeah, and they take your excuses. mm -hmm. If you're like, I can't do this. And sometimes they agree with your excuses and sometimes they say, tell the judge. And let them decide. Um, There are some complete exclusions and excuses. Right. um, But there are very few. Very few. And if you don't show up, you will be held possibly in contempt of court and get a show cause to come to court and explain why you did not appear for jury service. That and you can be so fined extreme. and sometimes put in jail. It depends on it depends yeah. on the jurisdiction and what their rules are. Um, I don't think it is extreme because really? it's technically a public duty. Yeah. As a citizen of, of the county, the city that you're yeah. in. And we're all subject to it, so why aren't you? You you got to show up. You have to at least show up for the process to work. I think I would feel less like it was a strong punishment if, because for a lot of people, I missed like a week of work, and I didn't even get on a jury. This was just, I had to come every day, and they yeah. were trying to get a jury. Missed a week of work, which like, I was fine. But they paid us like $5 an hour. Yeah, it's so I miss very it. low. So for that, that's like a whole, I mean, and so for people who are actually on juries, like they missed a whole pay period and then you're going to get $5 an hour. I feel like maybe if we want to like match people's <laughs> wages, I would feel less extreme about the jury duty. Yeah, and they can't. And I think that's the biggest critique right. of being on the jury. And the most frustrating part of being a juror is the amount of time that you're missing from work and the pay that you could be missing or you're not getting. I mean, it's like, Five to fifteen dollars yeah, like an it's hour or a day, depending on the jurisdiction. It's really nothing because the idea behind it is this is your civic duty. Yeah. If you want to be in a society that is a republic, that's a democracy, yeah. then in order for this to work, in order for things to be fair, in order to have a jury of your peers, yeah. you need to show up and do your duty so mm-hmm. that all of us can have the same rights. Yeah. And it's a question in the process of why should you be excluded? Right. If you're excluded, so should the other person be excluded. And then we have no jury. Right. You know, we have, we have nobody. You only have the people who are retired. (laughs) Exactly. There, there's only the retirees. There's only the work from home parents. Yeah. But so you can't have that system, but it is very inconvenient for jurors. Oh yeah. So I believe in the system, but I also recognize that there is a huge inconvenience. Yeah. My brother-in-law just served on a jury, yes. and he was on the jury for three weeks. Oh, my gosh. He actually got selected for the jury, 
And it was a very long trial. Yeah. And he had to figure out what to do with work. I will say I strongly advise jurors who find themselves in that kind of situation to talk to an employment law attorney. Oh, interesting. Because there are some things your employers are not allowed to do. Right. If you're on a jury, some things they can, some things they can't. And one of the jurors in his trial had to leave. So my brother-in-law was an alternate. Oh, so he got and he ended up up. being on the jury. Wow! Because one of the the main members of the jury, their boss told them, "If you don't come back tomorrow, you're fired." Now, I think that you can't do that. I'm not an employment attorney, but that's why I say, yeah, some jurors should actually talk to employment law attorneys because there are some things your employer is not allowed to do. Right? I don't think they can do that. I don't it's, know. It's just like voting. They have to give you the time to go do they it. They right? have to. But in this case, the, the yeah. juror said, I don't know what to do. He's seeing this. He's for real. Right. If I don't show up tomorrow, I lose my job. The judge ended up excusing him. Right. But that was after he'd been on the jury already for three weeks. So my brother-in-law is the alternate, becomes the main juror. And so talk to, if you're a juror, yeah. I fully empathize with what you're going through. But talk to an employment law attorney. Do your best to figure out that this is truly your civic duty. And the people who are there and are on trial or are presenting the case, it it means a lot to them. And it is sometimes a matter of life and death. It's a, yeah. for criminal cases. It's a matter of a loss of freedom. For civil cases, I know it's like it's just money. But a lot of civil cases, they're brought because there's a victim, Right. right? There's the plaintiff who says, this defendant did me wrong. And yeah, the only thing that you can do is compensate me through money, but there's a reason I'm being Mm -hmm. compensated and I have the right to be heard and I want a fair trial. Yeah. So for me, it's like find a way in your heart to understand that these people need you, Yeah. that they can't finish this case. They can't find justice one way or the other Right. on either side, whoever the justice is for, without you yeah and it's hard there is no you know jury of your peers without the jury to sort of adjudicate that yeah and you can choose to waive the jury okay right. so you can there are a lot of bench trials not everybody goes to jury trial um in a civil case it's usually either the plaintiff or defendant can can demand a jury either side can in a criminal case it's usually the defendant's right to yeah. choose um, and if they don't want to go to a jury, they can choose a bench trial. But for a jury trial, we need a jury. Yeah. And then you kind of roll your dice, right? Because you yes. never know. I mean, we say a jury of your peers. But the reality is, like, I am 27. If I needed a jury for some reason, either a civil case or a criminal case, like, I'm not getting a whole bunch of other 27-year-old women. Like, that's not no. what the jury is going to be. No, the jury of the peers is considered jury of the public. Right. Representative of the jurisdiction that you're in. Mm -hmm. Um, So the random people on your street, in your community. So in that way, that's how the Constitution works and is interpreted to define jury of your peers as who is in your community that you would be interacting with out on the street. As if you're going to the grocery store, who's in your grocery store? Well, that's not your peers of college students. That's your peers in the community. And the community as a whole should decide your fate, not just the community of the social groups that you're in. Which is so interesting. But then sometimes you sort of have people who are, you know, disqualified immediately. Like if you are related to one of the parties of the case, Mm -hmm. maybe if it's a civil trial, you know, you work for one of the companies, you have a close family member who does, right? Exactly. And sometimes um, one of the the most interesting pieces you're saying is, you know, yes, there's an exclusion. You cannot be on the jury and you're stricken for cause Mm -hmm. if you have a relationship in any way to any of the parties. Right. And that extends even to the people doing the trial. So if someone would know me as the attorney, they can't be on the jury. Interesting. Because it would be assumed that if you know me, you have an opinion. I would vote in favor. Well, not necessarily. Maybe you don't like me. Oh, that's true. So you have an opinion of me one way or the other, and your opinion of me 
would affect how you feel about my client. So you would be stricken from the jury. Family members, definitely not. But when you talk about companies, is there are a lot of defendants and plaintiffs who are companies, right? Yeah. For civil cases. And they're being sued or they're suing other agencies or people. And you can't have an employee of the company. And this is where we get into some of my favorites for the, the plaintiff's injury, mm-hmm. which is what I do. For the juries... I sue on behalf of my client, right? I sue a traffic case. Let's do a yeah. traffic case. Um, a traffic accident, my client has injuries. We're suing to recover money for the injuries that they had, the doctor's bills, lost wages. I get looking at the jury. Well, I've sued Jane Smith, okay? Mm-hmm. But Jane Smith is actually represented by an insurance company. State Farm, Geico, Allstate, somebody. Progressive, somebody out there, right? So I somehow have to figure out how to field the question of, does anybody work for an insurance company? Because the defendant doesn't want me to know, doesn't want the jury to know that it's the insurance company representing her. Right. Gene Smith wants you to think that you're suing her so that you don't want to take her money away. Right. But if you're like, oh, this is insert big name insurance company. Oh, well, sure. Award them a million dollars. Right. So the defense doesn't want me to be asking questions of do you work for an insurance company? Because then then the jury will presume and have an idea that there's an insurance company involved. Right. Where they want Jane Smith to look like she can't afford anything. And nobody should find against her because she can't pay. Right. Where if they know that it's Geico representing her, well, then, oh, okay, well, Geico can pay. So there's this fine line, depending on the state that you're in. Of what you can ask. Of what you can ask. In Maryland, it's less likely you can ask about it. Um, The judge does a lot of questioning versus the parties in Maryland. And you have to submit your questions to the judge yeah. for the judge to consider, are they going to ask it or not? And the, are you related to any of the parties question is really tricky. Right. Because you can have the judge say, well, are you re- you know related to any of the parties? Well, they think it's Gene Smith. Right. And I'm trying to get the judge to ask, are you related to an insurance company? Do you work for an insurance company? Right. And have that be an okay question in a car accident. In Virginia, it's it's allowed a little bit more. The the attorneys have a lot more leeway to ask their own questions versus the judge. So you but you're still walking a fine ground. Because you can't, you know, you can't ask things that are like prejudicial or discriminatory, Mm -hmm. but you also kind of want to like read in between the lines right. as much as you can to sort of get a gauge on who the jury is. Yeah. I also, if I was not going to be an attorney, my secret career that I would love to be is a jury consultant because one, it's made up. I'm sorry. Anybody who does it. It's subjective. It's subjective. Like there is no mm-hmm. hard science behind it. That's somebody looking at people and going, mm, the vibes over here. That's what they're doing. But that's what I do. Well, it's true. And I'm a, bl- I'm a big <laughs> believer. That's what I said. It would be my career because I'm a big believer in trusting my gut. And like, I'm usually right. And so I would just market myself as a jury consultant and be like, look, I can tell you what they're going to do. The vibes. <laughs> the vibes. <laughs> that lady has vibes. bad vibes. Strike. Bad vibes. Great vibes. <laughs> and so that's, but that's part of what, what the selection is. Okay. So easy selection is, you know, Miss Tarani, stand up. Can everybody see Miss Tarani? Does anybody know Miss Tarani? Is anybody related to Miss Tarani? Mr. You know, Miss Smith, stand up. She's mm-hmm. the defendant in this case. Is she related to any of you? There are those easy ones. You go through the witnesses. We've got this witness. Does anybody know this witness? Yeah. Does anybody work for the police department? Does anybody work for the government? Um, if you work for the police department, um, are you a police officer? Does anybody have strong opinions of police officers? Right. So you're going through basic questions of, you know, have you been convicted of a felony? Can you vote in this area? Are you 18? If it's a death Some penalty the, case, is that where it comes in? If Could you convict if this is a death penalty? Because I know that's a question that gets asked a lot in those cases. In those cases, you have to. You have to ask that question of, 
not you may not be allowed the general question of how do you feel about the death penalty mm-hmm. because usually it's questions and answers of yes and no or okay. raise your hand if because if there are 40 jurors in a room that I get to choose among I can't go through all 40 jurors and ask a question every single question right so what I'm generally asking is raise your hand if yeah you know Miss Tarani raise a hand Usually there's not many hands raised, but if somebody's hands raised, you say, how do you know Miss Tarani? I follow her on TikTok. (laughs) And there it may be. Right. Is, you know, I know her from social media. Okay. Well, as a result of you following her on social media, do you have any strong feelings about Miss Tarani? Yes or no? Okay. Well, then if it's a yes or no, if it's a yes, they may pull that juror aside bring them up to the bench with the attorneys to have the attorneys question them more as to what are those actual feelings? Because I don't want to taint the rest of the jury. Right. Right. Whatever that opinion is. Right. You don't want them to stand up and be like, I actually hate her because (laughs) now I have an audience. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm now, I'm trying to decide, is there a strong opinion? Yes or no. If there is, now I'm going to pull them out because I don't want them to say what that opinion is. Nope, scoop them up. Yeah, so those are going to be the ones they take to the bench because we're, there's the four cause strikes. Okay. And you get unlimited four cause strikes. That's cool. the one where if there is a strong cause that they should not be on the jury, are they blind and they can't see? Mm-hmm. Not that we're trying to exclude disabled people, but if you can't see the witnesses, if you can't see the evidence, are there photographs that they would have to see? Right. Then that's a four cause. It's not about their disability. It's about they cannot actually access the evidence. Right. There have been, I have had to exclude for cause um, some retired people who can't hear. Right. Where they have um, hearing aids, but they still can't hear enough. Mm-hmm. Well, if we're going to do a couple day trial, And you can't even hear the witnesses. It's not about your disability. It's about you just cannot physically perform the duties that are being asked of you as a juror. Right. So that's a for cause. Mm -hmm. So, you know, knowing somebody that's for cause, not being able to participate in the way that a juror would need to participate. Um, I'm trying to think what else would be for cause. Um, Other for cause is we get into the strong opinions. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, this is a capital case. Right. Is there anyone who cannot, right, cannot vote in favor of the death penalty? Even if I thought they, right, I, right, you know, someone who's like very abolitionist minded mm-hmm. or someone who, um, just their religious beliefs or whatever it is. Right. It, you know, there, are, everybody's going to have an opinion about the death penalty, right. but you have to narrow it down to, Is there anyone who cannot convict, even if we, even if they meet all the elements of the law to convict, that you still would not be able to convict just because it's the death penalty? They're stricken for cause. Which, right, you can't really perform your duties. Right. There are the, you know, in a drug case, I'm going to start asking, is there anyone who has family members or close friends who have drug addictions. Interesting. Um, I'm going to start feeling out, is there is there an opinion that people have, and this which is what you're looking for, is there an opinion that you have that you can suss out that will be so strong that they either would only rule for you or only rule against you? And each side is looking for those players. Do you, did you find it hard? And this is sort of like a practical question with this. That in I know Maryland, the judge is really asking, but like in Virginia, did you find it hard to sort of think about the questions you're asking, ask them, and sort of read the room at the same time? That feels like a lot to pay attention to. to it me. is a lot because you have potentially 40, 50, 60 people in there, yeah. depending on the case. You have more. The jury pool is larger that's pulled into any one courtroom, yeah. depending on the type of case. So if it's a murder case, you're yeah. looking 40, 50, 60. If it's a civil traffic case, you know, you're not looking at many and you don't have to have 12 jurors. You only have to have six or, you know, however many in your jurisdiction. But you have to have a large enough pool. 
And I now have to look at everybody in the jury box and everyone who's not in the jury box. Yes. I've got to scan the whole room. I've got to see who's raising their hands or who's not, or who's nodding their heads or whatever the, or the appropriate action is. Who's not saying something, but making a face. Because that's how they got me. The I didn't say anything, but I was like, mm. Absolutely. Who's making facial expressions? Who's not paying attention? Right. Those are the worst. I want them gone. Really? And I can't necessarily do it for cause. So these are the people I'm looking at who's not engaged, who's yeah. sleeping, who looks angry. And I've got to figure it all out while right. still asking questions or having a judge ask questions and panning the room, listening to what they're saying. I've got to suss out the one person who's saying really crazy things, make sure I bring them up to the bench, right. but then watch how that's affecting everybody else. Right. It is hard. And you honestly, I need five cameras that or I can someone review. just there staring at everybody. Mm -hmm. In order to pick it up. And there are, so there are the four cause ones that you're trying to get to those. And that, yeah, that's going to be for sort of both sides that mm -hmm. it'll be for cause. But then Absolutely. there's strikes that are not for cause. Yeah, they're called peremptory challenges. Mm -hmm. And each side has so many, depending on your state and depending on your county. So there are usually four in Virginia, right. each, four each, where you can eliminate four each to get down to, to 12. So right. you have a pool of 20. Um, so it's reduced to 20, and then you each get four peremptory. Okay. Um, so after the challenges, you get that. Now, if you have less than 20, you only get, you know, you only get what however you get. <laughs> many you have. But usually it starts with one side, and you strike a name off the list, and it's passed to the other side. They strike a name off the list. It's passed back. Um, so this is how the peremptory goes. Do they is, ask questions during that time? Or is that just at, at the end of the questions, then mm -hmm. you do strikes? At, at the end of the questions, you do peremptories. Okay. During the questioning, you do four cause. That makes sense. And then after the questioning, you can still do a four cause challenge. Um, so you may have to wait until all of it, but you try to get it done during the time. What and are then, some of the questions you would ask that are not like a, not necessarily a for cause, but something that you would want to know that may not produce, would give you some information. Do you know what I'm asking? I do. Okay. I do know exactly what you're asking. So in domestic violence cases, has anyone been the victim of or have a close friend or relative who's been a victim of domestic violence? I yeah, want to know that. that would probably be a uh, yeah. pretty solid question. In a lot of the, the, Felony cases or criminal cases, I would want to know: Has anyone been a victim of a crime? As has you know, I can you ask like, has anyone ever been convicted of a crime? Can you ask that? Well, you have to. Well, I mean, if they have been convicted, <laughs> sorry, that was dumb. no, no, no. It's not done because there's a difference between felonies and any. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like so, if yes. you, you absolutely can. Has anyone been convicted of a crime? Has anyone been charged with a crime? Right. Has anyone gone to trial? Have you thought? I think one of the questions they asked, I'm like thinking back on it now, was have you ever been party to a lawsuit? Because this yes. was a civil case that I was like Absolutely. trying to get on. Another one is interesting. I was just thinking about it. They actually, it was down there, maybe 30 of us in the room at this point, but they asked, and the judge was asking, not the attorneys, even though the attorneys had mm -hmm. been, they were like, stand up if you live in a home with someone that you are not married or blood related to. Mm -hmm. um, and there were a couple of us that we stood up because I was living with a, a- Roommates, yeah. Yeah, roommates, boyfriends, any of those type of thing. Stood up and then they were like, okay, who do you live with? Mm -hmm. And you're like, and then they were like, well, where do they work? And I was like wondering, I was like, okay, for the people who are married, do they just have a list of like where people work? Because there's like records of that. That was my thought at the time. But And it depends. Yeah, it, they, some do. Some, I think they really might have because they really mm -hmm. singled it out to people who had no sort of legal relationship with the people they lived with. Yeah, because you have more records on the, the exactly. marital um, homes, familial homes. So yeah, I mean, you can really, in some states and jurisdictions, you can get down to the nitty gritty. Yeah. Did, you know, what was the crime? Were you, you know, how was your experience with the, the trial? Did you have a jury trial or a bench trial? Were you a witness to a case? Did you actually have to testify? Did the outcome, were you happy with the outcome of the case? Yeah. Were you dissatisfied with the outcome of the case? If so, why? Did you feel that the jury was fair? 
Um, did you have any problem with the defense attorneys? Did you have any, you can yeah. ask, depending on your jurisdiction, you can ask a lot of those questions. Now you can't go down a rabbit hole and ask them for their, you know, kindergarten teacher. It has to have some relevance to the case, the court system, the jury system as a whole, or the type of case that you're in. So what do you do? Cause now I'm really reflecting on this jury experience <laughs> because I mean, I think it was pretty casual. Again, is is casual you're going to be in a courtroom. It was like small town Georgia. Of course. Um, I'll never forget this because they were asking lots of questions and they seemed pretty normal to me. The only one I thought was weird was like, do you live with someone that you're not blood related to? I was like, okay, that was strange. But I'll never forget. There's this one dude. I can like see him in my mind because I was like in the row that was not in the jury box. The jury box is here. Like I'm in the row here. So I'm like facing the judge and the attorneys. And every time they would ask something, he would just go off. On this weird tangent, right? the attorney? So the, no, no, no. One of the guy, one of the potential jurors. Oh goodness! And they Sorry, could everybody. Not, I'm refixing my microphone. Go ahead. They could not cut him off, and I was like, "They've got to stop this at some point, right?" Because he would just start saying, like, the questions were proper, the questions were inappropriate, and he would just be like, "This one time, I got pulled over." And you're like, "Where are we going with this?" And he was there for a long time. Before they like cut him out. Oh my goodness. I would have tried very hard to get him stricken for cause as quickly as possible. Both of the attorneys seem to agree on that. Like they were looking at each other like, what do we do? Wow. Yeah. Th- I mean, there are some where, especially family members of victims. Yeah. They get stricken a lot. Um, family members of police officers get stricken a lot. People in government jobs get stricken a lot. Um, because they they have strong opinions. Yeah. I think a lot of people do have strong opinions, but they just won't say it. And they're the people I'm afraid of in the jury pool. Is yeah. the, I would rather have someone who has an opinion, but can say, despite my opinion, I am willing to listen to the evidence and make a decision at the end of the evidence or be fair or do what the judge tells me or listen to the law yeah. and follow the law. I would much rather have someone like that on my jury than someone who hasn't answered any question. Okay. To me, I agree because I'd much rather know what I'm working with. Yeah. Right. I think and that seems to make sense. If you at least know where people are mm-hmm. at versus someone who's, who's neutral, nobody yeah. is that neutral. I don't believe it. Like to me, yeah. nobody is just that bland. Right. So it, I am more likely to strike someone I've not talked to or who has made no response of any kind at all. I'm more likely to get rid of them with a peremptory than anyone else. Because they are also just, you know, when you are like trial strategy, they are an unknown. Complete wild card. Right. Complete unknown. They could be as bland as they're seeming, or they could have the most off the wall opinions that somehow the questions it didn't hit on or they didn't want to right or they Some just people just choose not to answer even if they have an answer or should have raised their hand or should have stood up or whatever the the appropriate yeah. response is and they're the ones that scare me that makes sense so that's what i'm looking for is you know yes there are preferences if i'm representing if I'm a state's attorney and I'm representing a domestic violence victim, I would prefer to have victims from domestic violence right. on my jury, but the defense doesn't. So they're going to get rid of them. Right. Um, they're going to ask every possible question they can of, well, you know, will you just assume that because they're a plaintiff, they're a, a victim too? the me too movement is out. Mm-hmm. A lot of juries, um, sexual related mm-hmm. cases, civil or criminal, there is now the the questions of has every has anybody heard of the Me Too movement? They can is ask any, that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm yeah. in a rape case. Has any a defense? Oh my gosh, I'm a defendant in a rape case. As an attorney, I'm going to say, has anyone heard of the Me Too movement? I'm going to get a lot of chuckles, but everybody's going to raise their hand, right? And I'm going to say, okay. Is anyone a strong supporter of the Me Too movement? Right. Not just yeah, part of it, but is someone a strong supporter? If you're a defense. Yeah. Has you don't anyone want them. gone to a rally, a parade, a oh, conference, that's... a seminar regarding the Me Too movement? Yeah. Do I guess you that makes believe, sense. do you have or know of any women in your own life who are victims 
and could be considered part of the Me Too movement. I mean, I would be asking all of it. And then I would assume if it was like a drug case you'd and you were defense, you would want younger people on the jury. Absolutely. Because even though you might not even ask the specific question, but you know, generally younger people have a more accepting view of, so if you're defense, but if you're yeah. prosecution, you're like, give me the 80 year olds, put them on the jury. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm looking for as prosecution, I'm looking for people who are, I'm going to ask questions of, do you think that drugs should be legal? <laughs> I'm out. That's, I, I mean, that's a lot of questions I would ask as a prosecutor in a drug case is, do you think that drug, any drug should be legal? Which ones? What kind of answers do you get when you ask something like that? Oh, you get a what? I mean, first you ask again, depending on your jurisdiction. Yeah. I'm a broken record on these <laughs> things, but I would ask: Is you know a general question? Mm-hmm. Is there anyone who thinks that drugs should be legal? <laughs> I scan the room. Okay, I'm going to ask you a second question for those who raise their hand. Is there anyone who thinks? that drugs other than marijuana should be legal. Right. That narrows down the jury pool. So, yeah, so if and you're, then, like, dealing with something that's, like, uh-huh. heroin, coke. Yes. So then I'm going to say, okay, for those of you who just raised your hand, let's take away those about the marijuana. Yeah. I get the jury to laugh, right? I'm building rapport with the jury. Yeah. Okay, so now, now we've excluded those with the marijuana. I'm looking for the others. Yeah. What kind of hard drug do you think should be legal? Right? But I'm building rapport. I'm building some kind of view. There are a lot of people, including myself, who have the opinion that if the attorney gets to ask the questions for jury voir dire, it's called jury voir dire, as they're asking questions of the jury. If the attorney gets to do it, you win or lose your case in jury voir dire. Okay. I feel like we've talked about my, how I would feel. I mean, I think that your first interactions, whether it is in voir dire or it is at opening statements, sets the tone. It does. And like I said, we, there's attorneys who have lots of different sort of styles, but there's some that to me is very off-putting. Um, Absolutely. And I think that whether it is opening statements or it is them just asking questions like in their response to, you know, like you said, you chuckle, you laugh at funny things, but if they're like having a bad attitude or seem impatient I think that would put me automatically there in a deficit in my mind. Absolutely. Because no juror wants to be there. Right. They don't want to be there. So as an attorney doing questioning, I'm going to try to make it as pleasant an experience as possible. Is it something? (laughs) I I've got him. (laughs) Is it something where they can at least not hate? That they're there. Right. I, you know, I'm appealing. I'm thanking them. Thank you so much for being here. It means yeah. a lot to all of us. This is really important and we're really appreciative. Um, thanks for going through this process. It's going to be difficult, but let's get through it together. Are you trying to scoop him? I am scooping. He's so scoopable. <laughs> He's he is, we call him portable size. Um Chelsea is calling him scoopable. He's oh. he's mid size. He's about twenty five pounds. He he's lost the warm. warm weight. He is. Look, blondies are over here. <laughs> <laughs> the blondes on that side. He does love Chelsea. I'm so obsessed with Charlie. I, he's oh. obsessed with you. He's so sweet. Every time you guys should see when she comes over. Every time she comes over, Charlie is shaking. Completely shaking, wagging his tail because his best friend has come over. We are BFFs. They are. They really are. At some point, he's just going to leave me. So and I'm go just going to gonna, Chelsea. I'm gonna get one of those like um, wearable, you know how they have like baby carriers? <laughs> we can <laughs> wear. Baby Bjorn type of thing. Yes, I want one for him where I can just wear him around. <laughs> no. <laughs> I want one for Olive, but Olive is almost 70 he's pounds. He's too big. And I can't do it. But he's perfect. Scoopable size. Could he's put him in the scoop- bank. Portable, <laughs> scoopable. He's, he's that size. It's so sweet. So funny. Okay. So, but yeah, so they, I, I would try to build rapport with the jury. And the more that the jury likes me, the more that they like my client. It's subtle, subconscious things that I'm looking for. I'm looking for any way to tell them about the case that the judge will permit me. Okay. 
the rape case that I had. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I had I've done multiple rape cases, only once for the defense. Right. Um, we've talked about it before. Yeah. But it was the one case I truly believed the defendant was was not guilty. Right. And my theme was this was stupid. Mm-hmm. You can even call it immoral, but it wasn't a crime. That right. was my theme. We admitted to the DNA from the beginning. So what did I do in jury voir dire? I do you said believe that people at the beginning, my client is admitting that he had sex with this woman. Started at yeah. the very beginning. My client is admitting this. Is there anyone here who just because he had sex with her would convict him for rape? Interesting. Is there anyone here who just because they found his DNA would convict him of rape? Is there anyone here who just because she said they were drinking would convict him of rape? Okay. And that, so that makes I sense went through, here's my case. I went through my case. And like, so for the opposite side, sort of obviously not this case, but mm-hmm. in a, you know, in a similar sexual case, if you're a prosecutor and maybe the victim is a sex worker, you're, you know, you're going to ask those types Absolutely. of questions, right? Does anybody think that a woman who is a prostitute deserves to be raped? Right. Or can't be raped? Right. That well, is- and that, that makes me think of, you know, the cases that were like about marital rape. Like, I'm mm-hmm. sure that is a question. Oh, those were hard. The, well, it I was mean, the so logic, hard to prove those. Stuff like this blows my mind because mm-hmm. I talk about time blindness in my like everyday life with ADHD, but then like historical time blindness is even mm-hmm. worse. Everybody has it, right? Like when you think about how far away things are, but marital rape was not illegal in every state till like the it 90s. It, it's been a recent development so that's a huge question area right for a jury is if this is a wife is there anyone who believes that she would not could not be raped by the defendant her husband just for the fact that they're married which is again it is a recent change but that the fact that there could be more than one answer to that question is so hard for me to wrap my mind around but i'm sure it's like that with a lot of things that you think <laughs> he pooped his little head. Okay, so are there things you're not allowed to ask? Yes. Or the strike judge for is even. Going, yeah, the judge is going to be very careful. And he's not going to allow you to, uh, he or she is not going to allow you to ask anything you want to. It has to be related to the case. And there are some that are, are very relevant. There are a lot where if the prosecutor or a civil attorney is saying, well, is there anyone who lives in this neighborhood? And they're going down and just because you live in this neighborhood kind of thing. Well, who mm-hmm. cares? It, you know, unless the crime scene happened in a daycare. <laughs> right. You know, it's it's not, it, you're going down a path that doesn't matter. They want to keep you focused. Um, there are some things that the way you ask them could be prejudicial. Okay. Where you're prejudicing the jury by asking them. Okay. Um, which is what you're trying to do, right? I mean, you're kind trying of, yeah. to influence them by the questions that you're asking. Okay, so that's interesting. But there are some that the jury will say no, you re- or the judge will say you really cannot ask those types of questions. Um, but it's it's different depending on the type of case. Okay. Um, you have, I mean, think about it. You've got gang cases, drug cases, yeah. gun cases. There are a lot of people who have very strong opinions about guns. But I was just thinking that. A you're lot there. of that. Should should guns be legal? These are the questions you're asking. Do you think that all guns should be illegal? We've got a lot of gun reform. Is there anybody who thinks right. that you shouldn't have concealed carry? Right. So many questions depending on the type of case. Traffic accident case. Is there anyone who's been in a traffic accident? Which I'm sure is like... How many people? Okay. Right. Did you cause the accident or did somebody else? Were you injured? Did you file a suit? Did you file a lawsuit? Did you have a claim? Did you get, did you have a settlement? Right. With an insurance company? Do you have permanent injury? I mean, maybe, I don't know if you can ask that. You can. You absolutely can. But will the judge let you? Yeah. Cause that one, I feel like I can see where that starts pushing that line of like, mm, not necessarily. Really? Um, so, 
in Maryland, again, I'm most most of the jurisdictions won't let me ask yeah. questions, which kills me. I'm really good at jury voir dire. I feel like that's the fun part too. <laughs> I'm really good at it. Um, so it really was depressing when I went to Maryland and the judge made me turn in requests for questions and had their standard script. It's like I don't understand. That's so I would funny. like to get in, involved with this jury. I do not understand. My, Can I ask a question? And no. Mm-hmm. One of my trial ad professors, I feel like I told you this, was actually a judge in Maryland. He was a, he was a quirky old guy. Like he, oh, I love it. So Because I had two. I had the Marine who was kind of like the one who was mm-hmm. usually in charge. But then he was great, but he was just quirky. He kind of did his own thing. He I would like that. come to class sometimes. He would not come other times. <laughs> but he did talk about this. He was like, honestly, they give me their list and I just ask whatever I want. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, judge, you can't. Cause that's but what he we, came? That's what we all called him. He said, call me judge. So we all called him judge. And we're like, judge, you can't do that. And he was like, actually, I can. Yeah, I can. And I was like, sir. And he was like, I've been doing this long enough that I know what questions to ask was his attitude. About and it. that's how it's presumed is the judge is the one who knows what to ask. I'm sorry. And I they not have put their that standard. man in, in charge of asking questions for my fake trial. I would not have let him do that. No. And that's why I was like, I really don't like juries in Maryland. Now I won, but not, you know, it, I like questioning my own jury. I get very possessive of my juries as well, I feel like I that. know them better. Well, you do know them better once you have mm-hmm. sort of that question, like, you know, in yeah. response time. But even if I can't, even if it's questions for cause, even if the judge is asking questions like in Maryland and there's one that's flagged, I immediately go up and I do the best I can to make rapport. Okay, well, that one's stricken. Well, that sucks. Now yeah. I can't, I, my rapport is gone. Um, right. So it's much harder in Maryland. And that's why the opening statement is more important in Maryland. Yeah. So the jury of Wadir is important in Virginia because it's your first impression. In Maryland, it's the opening statement. Um, but then you get, we'll talk real quick about the peremptories. Okay. And then we'll come back to juries on another day. Perfect. There's lots about juries. I know. We haven't even gotten to my favorite topic and we'll hit that next I time. Know. We've got jury nullification. I'm going to talk about peremptory yeah. challenges, but I want to come back on another day to talk about bats and challenges. I was going to say, that is also a fascinating one. Because that's huge. Juries are very interesting. So what happens with peremptory? So you go through the four cause. They yeah. can't serve on this jury because they're biased. They right. cannot be fair. They cannot be impartial. That's the yeah. big word for juries. They sort of have can to be you be impartial? If you cannot be impartial, you have to be excluded. Mm-hmm. Then there are those people who are still left. There's the ones left. And you have to figure out, you have to strike people yes. to get down to the number of jurors that you have to have for that particular case. And so you're looking for whichever side you're on, who you think is most likely to side with you, right? Mm-hmm. Basically. Absolutely. So then I'm looking at who's their employer. What's What type of work do they do? What past experiences have they Education level. To? What's their education level? I, you know, you're not supposed to exclude on the basis of race. Right. That's what's called a Batson challenge. Is if I'm I'm striking people for specific types of age, race, gender, right? Then I could have a constitutional problem. Yeah. Because I've excluded someone for an improper reason. Reason, but I'm still having to look. At, wow, have I placed only women on the jury? Right. That's a problem for me. Have I placed only men on the jury? Have I placed any African Americans on the jury? Are they not? Like, you're looking, you're consciously having to look at all of these factors. And to exclude someone, I've got to figure out a reason, not based on race, gender, Mm. age. Right. All of these unconstitutional reasons to strike them. So I'm looking for that person who hasn't said a word. Yeah. They're gone. I'm looking for someone who, if it's a car accident case, I'm looking for someone who was the at-fault driver in a case. Right. In in their own car accident. I'm looking for someone who's not paying attention. I'm looking for someone who doesn't want to be there. I'm looking for all of these other things. What I'm listening to all of the answers that they gave. Because they give stuff away. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking about... Another one that is interesting, I feel like I saw this just a lot in Georgia, you know, you have a lot of military vets and for good or for evil, people have a lot of sort of, 
you know, preconceived notions about, Absolutely. There's, I mean, the military is huge. The military is very mm-hmm. diverse, but people tend to think they favor prosecutors. Yep. And so defense would strike them. And I'm like, you really don't know. Well, now, and there's all the Black Lives Matter right. campaigns. And how and, you feel and about movement. How do you politics feel about- Politics and- Oh my gosh, it's all open questions. So I'm going to be listening to the answers that were given for my particular type of case- my particular type of client. And if I don't think those answers would be favorable to my client, I'm going to try to strike them. But then there's the other side, they get strikes too. And sometimes they strike someone I would have left on the jury. And I'm like, oh, Oh, yeah, I really wanted that person. And now they're gone. Okay, well, that's they're thinking the same on my side is did I strike someone they wanted? And that's the peremptories is you usually have three or four. However, there are sometimes more. Yeah. If it's a, a bigger felony case, if it's a capital case, a life sentence case, then you usually have a higher jury pool and higher peremptory numbers. I do have a question for you. I don't know the answer to this. So when juries are seated for like grand juries, how does that work? Because you don't have a defense presenting a side. So oh, that's like, totally different. Are they, do they just randomly grab people up then? <laughs> Like what are the dark <laughs> Well, there are also methods for jury pools. There okay. are specific requirements for the jury pools for the grand jury. Um, there, it's a lot is, easier, I would think. Right, it's easier because you just choose them, like, and they're not deciding like someone's. Yeah, no, you choose or the the grand jury hears every case that's up for that session. Oh, I didn't realize that that they are just sitting there basically all day and hearing everything. Yeah. It's any case oh. that's available that session, or there are special grand juries for like to investigate one spe- t- one investigation. I don't know why I didn't realize mm-hmm. that aside from those special ones that they just sat there all day and got everything that came through. It's every okay, case that's that has what I to need be to get on. Then. I want on a grand jury. Well, you don't though because you're there for forever. But I'm and so sometimes curious. you're there for months. Oh, never mind. I mean, sometimes it's like a six. Let month me walk that back. Service. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, I feel like I could do a like I feel like I could do a good job on a jury. I think you could. But I do have a lot of opinions and I do think I at the end of the case, right? I think I would hear the evidence, but everybody's going to agree with me. Like I'm going to be the I'm going to be a holdout. Yeah, that's the truth. And that's I'm looking for you too. <laughs> I'm looking for anyone who's gonna who hold is going to hold out. I'm looking for leaders. I'm going to strike them. Right, because you want people to kind because, of group think. <laughs> yes, I want group, not one person who's going to sway them. I think that's the truth, is I, that... I'm getting rid of as many attorneys as I possibly can. <laughs> um, I'm getting rid of doctors. Yeah. Oh, especially in like a... On a personal injury, that's what I do. I don't want doctors on my jury because they're going to have an opinion about all of the evidence I'm presenting, and I want a jury who doesn't know anything about medicine. Right. So that they listen to my experts, not someone on the jury who has their own opinions. Oh, that's interesting. I would even think, and this is me thinking out loud as I do here. So if you like say your client, whichever side, if they're a defendant or a plaintiff, whatever, is like a teacher or something, do you, and the case is involving their profession, to be clear, you would want to strike people in the same as profession. As many as I could, yes. Because it, I mean, I was thinking like a teacher and a student interaction. Well, I wouldn't have done that type of conversation. That's exactly why you're trying to exclude them. But you never know because they also might be that teacher did the right thing. But erring on the side of caution, you'd want to strike them, right? It's a risk. But you put priority. I'm going to leave it with this. I prioritize people. Okay. Is when I get the time, if I get the time to pause before we make the peremptories, Mm -hmm. I write a list of everybody I would want to strike and everybody I would want to keep. And on the side of the I want to strike, I rank them. Okay. And the people I have to have gone, I put them at the top. Okay. Usually there's two. About two. And no matter what, I'm choosing that two. What moves them to the top of your list? Depends on what they've said. Okay. And depends on their profession. Interesting. Um, but there I every jury, there's always somebody who's I'm like, I want them gone. I want them gone. I do not want that person. There's at least one, usually yeah. two. If I'm really lucky, the other side will strike them. Oh, because there's somebody who just seems off right, the who's rocker. So bad for either of us. Yeah. So if I'm really lucky, they'll choose some of my peremptories and I'll be like, okay, I don't have to use them anymore, and I get my next pick. 
Ooh, I love like um, But I'm going to rank them as these are the most dangerous for me that I want off if I have the choice. Gotcha. Um, and if the other side picks some of those, then I move farther down the list. But I'm going to have a ranking system. I am going to ask my client, is there yeah. someone that you don't feel good about? They go to the high, the high part of Your the list. Your client is there during jury selection? Absolutely. I didn't know this. Absolutely. I thought it, I mean, I guess it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Defendant's there. I didn't, that's what I'm thinking. Is Plaintiff it? and defendant, if it's civil, they're both there. I'm going to give them an option. Is there someone you don't feel good about? I feel like I'm mind blown because I don't know why in my brain. I just assume I've been watching too much Law and Order is what it is. <laughs> Stop watching TV, y'all. It is not real. It okay. is not Look, real. I've moved over to Love is Blind, so we're off of <laughs> Oh, God, it's not real. It is not real. So <laughs> look into jury selection in your state. It is absolutely fabulous and interesting. I find it really interesting there's a lot with juries that i don't think i even realized until we start talking about it so we'll come back to it um we'll do more on juries i think actually being a part of a jury and what happens with that i think is a really interesting topic oh absolutely. i have some fun stories on that too oh i can't um, wait and then bats and challenges we're gonna come back to that and I'm, that's when in jury nullification we jury got nullification good. we've got some interesting things so it's kind of a parter but it's really an overall topic. There's so much to talk about with yeah. the jury. Hopefully that gave you some insight as to the jury selection process. If you have questions, let us know, give us comments. If there's something specific about the jury that you want to know, let us know that too. So we can touch it on another day. Um, but hopefully that gave you some information on what you didn't know about the law and the legal system and would no one ever told you clearly <laughs> until now. So I, I assume most Thank of our Thank you for joining my study session with me. <laughs> Chelsea is now going to find a way to pass the bar and be a real attorney um, with this information. <laughs> From your lips to God's ears. <laughs> On that note, like, subscribe, and follow so that you can see our next videos, that they'll come up for you more easily and more quickly and so that others can see and find us um, for their amusement, entertainment, and education. I'm Virginia Tarani. And I'm Chelsea Rogers. We're part of Tarani Law LLC because you never need a lawyer. Till you do.